for Pete's sake, why am I here? Well, actually, do you know what? That's the exact reason why. We've all heard about the fires in Australia, bleaching coral reefs, and the rainforests of the Amazon being destroyed. But have you really heard about the bogs? They've always been put on the back burner when it comes to climate change. In terms of bogland, they covered 3% of the world's surface. They account for a second only to the ocean in terms of carbon storage. And that's twice as much as the entirety of the world's forests. So where, when we are in Ireland, we hold 3% of the, or sorry, 8% of the world's boglands. That's a huge responsibility. When we look at the peatlands here, we associate them with turf, with peat, with the smell of fires, as well as the sheogs, the bog fairies, and the bog bodies. But it's very much embedded in our past and our culture. However, it has an even better future, if only we protect it. So when it comes to climate change and peatlands, what is peat? I got asked this at the last talk, so I'm going to explain it now. So peat is a substrate. It is 90% water, 10% vegetation, and we tend to exploit it a lot in Ireland. We drain it for agriculture and for forestry, bringing the water table right down, meaning that it is no longer a living bog. For a living bog to happen, we have to have moss. This is multiplied many times. This is a sphagnum moss, and it's usually five centimeters in height. Carpets of sphagnum moss drag CO2 in from the atmosphere and store it deep down in the soil where it gets compressed to form peat. But when we're looking at peat, it needs to have vegetation on top to survive. If we take a layer of vegetation off, it no longer absorbs carbon, acting as a carbon sink, and instead turns into a carbon source, where the carbon dioxide in the peat mixes with the atmosphere and gets released. So, if we're talking about one rugby pitch of Irish peatlands, that is blanket bogs or raised bogs, that stores 2,000 tonnes of stored carbon. Not only is it holding the carbon of dead plants, but it's actively taking in carbon all the time. So it has to be covered. The problems arise, as I said earlier, when this layer is removed. But the solutions are simple. On an area of waste bogland where it has been cut, there are only two ingredients you really need to add water, is number one. That's dam the drains and let the water table rise again. And then add some sphagnum moss. So transplant the sphagnum back onto the bog. So next time you step on the squishy, soggy soil, just remember what these guys are doing for us. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Maria. Very good. Very good. Very good.